Hey guys, what's going on? In today's video, we're gonna be looking at how to survive as black against the fried liver attack. Now, if you're not familiar with that opening, don't worry, I'm gonna go over all the basics in just a second. But the fried liver attack is considered by many to be one of the riskiest openings that you can play as black. And so most people who do videos on it, they do it from white's perspective, they tell you how awesome it is and how you sacrifice a knight and you get checkmated in a couple of moves. Well, I'm gonna show you in this video that that's not exactly the case. And if you know what to do as a black, it's actually quite playable and you can end up in a position just up a piece. Now, that being said, this opening is not for the faint of heart. On move seven, you'll be bringing your king to e6, which is almost the center of the board. And you have to watch out for all sorts of threats from white's pieces. So if you like wild and exciting and complicated positions, this is definitely something you wanna check out. Now, if you're a beginner, don't be afraid to play this because even though it's complicated for you, it might be a little bit difficult for you to, to defend, it's also difficult for your opponent to find the right moves as well. And so that works both ways. Now, that being said, trying to play the fried liver as black to play against the fried liver is kind of like... And if you happen to mess up somewhere along the way, it could very easily turn into... That being said, I think it's a shame so many players avoid this as black because it really leads to some pretty cool, exciting, and, and fun positions to play. And so I hope that after you watch this video, you'll be willing to give it a try. So let's jump right in and see what this is all about. Okay, so the fried liver attack comes out of the Italian game. So e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6. So these are very common moves to start the game with. Bishop to c4, white's lining up here. And now black has two main options, bishop c5 and knight to f6. And if you play knight to f6, this is the two knights defense, you give white the option to go into a fried liver. And most players who are playing this as white will probably do this. They don't have to, they can also play like d3 or just castle or knight c3. But most players will go for this knight to g5 move and they're threatening a fork on your rook and your queen. At this point, the only real way to stop this threat is to play pawn to d5 to block off the bishop. And now white captures and the main line that most people play is knight to a5 here. And the reason they do that is they want to avoid the fried liver attack. And by playing knight a5, you go into a bunch of other lines that are part of the two knights defense, which we're not gonna cover in this video. The fried liver attack it happens after you capture on d5, okay? And it's a very natural looking move, you're just taking back the pawn. But what it allows white to do is capture here, sacrificing their knight. And after they take, you take. The reason white did that is so they can play queen to f3 with this little double attack on your king and your knight. Your knight's pinned by the bishop, and you have to now, you have to move your king to e6 in this position. If you try to like run and hide in, in the corner, you get checkmated. They just capture, your king has nowhere to go, and the only thing you can really do is block, and you get mated. So that's not an option, and even moving the king anywhere else is bad, you just lose your knight. So the only move that you can play is king to e6. So this is how we arrive at this position. This is known as the fried liver attack. So at this point, you're up a piece, because you have four pieces and white only has the three, but your king is in a lot of danger. And the, basically, the next several moves of the game, it's gonna be white, trying to put pressure on your king, and you trying to defend it. And if you can survive and not get checkmated and not give back any major material, you're gonna come out up a piece and, and be winning in the game. So that is your goal, just survive. And that's what I'm gonna try to show you how to do as we keep going through this video. So the, the move that everybody's going to play as white is knight to c3, okay? Your knight is pinned and they just wanna line up more pieces on your knight. So they're always gonna play knight to c3 to attack this. Now, the move that you have to play is knight to b4. You can also defend this knight with by going back here, but that's bad for you. Don't play that. This is considered uh, the main line and is really the only option. So you play knight to b4 to add a defender to your knight. 
Now in this position, the move knight to b4, not only does it defend, you're also setting up your own threat, uh, forking the king and the rook here. So because of that, a lot of players, and the most common move is they will just castle, right? They just get their king out of the, the way so that you don't have a fork anymore. And it opens up and allows their rook to come and put more pressure on your king. Now the other move that some people play is a3 to force you to do that so that they can t capture your knight on d5. So we're gonna look at both of those and how you should respond in each situation. So I'm gonna start with a3. So if they play a3, they're attacking your knight, you have to move the knight. The only move that makes sense is to capture on c2. If you move the knight like back here or back here, then you're just taking here and you're losing. So you have to go for this knight take c2 check. And now white has to play king to d1. If they try to run their king over this way, they're completely losing. You just simply play c6, add a defender here. You still have the threat on their rook. And so after they, they move, it just gives you more time. Now you can hop your knight back to d4 and, and black is completely winning. Okay, so when you put them in check, they have to go to d1. And the reason is it puts pressure on your knight so that now if you try to play c6 and defend, well, then they're just gonna take your knight. Right, so king d1, only move that they can play. And now you have to take the rook. Now, at this point in the game, if you just kind of step back and look at the position and you realize that, okay, it's white to move, this is terrifying because they have three pieces all lined up here. You only have it defended twice, which means they're gonna be able to take it either way, sorry, either way, and you're gonna have to just deal with the consequences. It looks extremely scary, but don't worry, I've checked this with Stockfish, which is a chess engine, and I've went very deep with, with the chess engine, and it says black is better. And usually, if the engine says black is better in positions like this, you can trust it. The okay? engines are very good in, in tactical, complicated positions like this. So just know black is better in this position somehow. Okay, so here's what's gonna happen. First of all, they don't wanna take with the queen because if they allow you to uh, trade queens, your position becomes much easy, easier to play. You're no, you don't have to worry about getting checkmated because queens are off the board. So that's not really an option. So there's two moves, two moves that we have to consider. First of all, let's look at bishop. So if they take with the bishop, it puts you in check immediately. And the move that you need to play is king to d7. King to d7. And now let's look at a couple of options for white. First of all, if they decide to just take this pawn, it, they're losing, you just simply capture, capture, and you play bishop to d6. And this bishop actually does an awesome job. It's Everything's defended. It really protects your king. And you're just up a rook, right? You got pieces are equal, and you just have an extra rook. White only has the one, you have two rooks. This is fine, you're just completely winning. So they don't wanna take on b7. Most players in positions like this are gonna be looking for checks. So queen f7 and queen f5 are actually two of the most common moves that are played. So let's look at these in turn. So first of all, queen to f5 check. Now this is a very crucial moment. Remember, you're walking through mouse traps. If you play the wrong move, you're done for. Okay, so if you go back here, queen f7 is checkmate, game over. So don't do that. And if you go to e7, it's mate in two. Queen here, king there. Knight there is checkmate, so you don't want to do that. The move you have to play is king to d6. And I know it looks super scary, but my friend Stockfish over here is telling me minus 4.5 for black. Okay, that means black is up almost a whole rook. So let's just take a look. Uh, the best move for white is queen to f7. And then you play queen to e7, offering a queen trade. Knight to e4 check. And now you can drop back to d7. So the important thing here is that after queen f7, this is gonna be checkmate. So you have to create a space for your king. That's why you go to e7, knight there, you can drop back. Okay, so the whole point, remember, you're just trying to survive. As long as you survive, you're up a rook. You have a lot of material. As long as you don't get checkmated, you're gonna win the game, okay? So just keep that in mind. And one thing I wanna point out, when you played king to d6, you opened up your bishop attacking white's queen. So he doesn't have a lot of options. He can't like bring his rook over or try to get his bishop out or, because his queen's hanging. He has to make a queen move. So that's why the, the you know the engine said queen f7, queen e4 is the next best move, but then you just play c6 and you're creating a, a space for your king to run to. Also blunting this diagonal, attacking the bishop and black's position is actually really good. White can try to open up with d4, but you just run back to c7 with your king, and after something like captures, uh, let's see, you you block with the queen. So you block with the queen, 
and you're you're good here. Minus 5.5 for black. Okay, that means you're up a rook. The rook over there, you're just up the rook and you're surviving. You're not getting checkmated, you're winning the game. And we just looked at queen f5. Let's look at one more move that's been played. Uh, queen f7 check immediately. And now you can just block with your queen. And yeah, I mean, white, does, white doesn't have anything here. There's there's no more real, real threats to deal with. Like if he goes back to f5, well, then you can just tuck your king back here and you're pretty safe. You've got pressure on the queen and your queen's doing a great job of defending. So you can see how you're surviving in that case. So I've went back, and remember, after you captured the rook, there was two options that white had. We just looked at, at the bishop, okay? So if they capture with the bishop, just as a recap, you go to d7. That's important. And then we looked at, at those options. You can go back and watch the video again if you need to get a refresher. The other option, and this is probably more common, I would think, this is what I would play if I was white, is capturing with the knight. And that's because it creates a discovered attack on your king, which means... Anywhere that this knight moves, you're going to be in check from the bishop. So it's very dangerous because like knight here, knight here, you're in check with the bishop, but now the knight's going to be threatening some pieces. So you got to watch out for that. But there's one move, one crazy move, queen to h4. And at first glance, it's like, why, what is the point of this, right? Well, number one, it's attacking the bishop. So if... Just as a silly example, if white moved the knight back here to push you in check, well, you would just take the bishop, right? So that's something white has to keep an eye on. Now, you're probably thinking, well, they could do this with a double check, and aren't they going to win my rook? And so let's take a look at that. Captures here. You play king to d7. And if they take your rook, which is not the best move, so I'll, I'll, we'll come back to the best move, but if they take your rook, then you just take the bishop. So that's the, that's the point of queen h4, is that... If they go for that and take the rook, their bishop is going to be hanging, right? And you take the bishop. And now you actually have some threats of your own. You've got queen c2 coming in here, and you're going to take the bishop. And white, all of a sudden, white's king is in more danger than yours is, believe it or not. And so that's kind of the, the point here, is that if they go for that, right? And there's another way that this can happen. If they go to b6 and try to take your rook that way, same kind of thing is going to happen. So in this case, you can't go to d7 because the knight covers it, but you go to e7, and again, if they take the rook, you can take on c4, actually, you also have bishop g4 pinning the, the queen is a really good move, both of these are completely winning, um, so whatever you like, if you want to go here and pin the queen and win their queen, or if you want to take this, also completely crushing for black, because you've got like threats here, you still have this threat, very, very good for black. So if we go back, to this position remember we played queen h4 and you see what happened the most the most common like 90 percent of players playing this are going to go for one of these i guarantee it because that's like the only move that looks natural right you have the discovered check you're going to probably go for the rook i mean at least if i'm playing this like that's what i'm going to do um but the best way that white can approach this is actually by playing knight to b6 check and when you go to e7 not taking the rook the best thing they can do is take your bishop so they take here you recapture and then they can save their bishop um and so that's you know the best thing also by removing that bishop there's no threat here to to pin your queen okay so let's see d3 is the best move and then you could go king to d8 and the idea is you want to let this bishop out but even in this position if white plays the best moves there black is better okay black is ahead um, it's, it's, uh, the fact that you got the rook, you're, you know, you're up the, uh, let's see, two pieces, yeah, you're up a rook, and so, even though your king is, you still have to be careful, the material, uh, puts you, puts you in a better position. All right, so I went all the way back to this start, and remember, we just looked at the lines where they play a3 and chase this knight away, right, so you have to go for this fork, remember, they can't go to f1, they have to go to d1 to attack your knight, you take it, and then we just saw what you do in those cases where if they capture with the bishop or with the knight. It's very playable for black. Now, it's tricky. And if you mess it up and don't remember those moves, it's not going to be good. So make sure you, if you're going to play this, take some time. Take some time to learn these lines. And it's going to pay off. I mean, you're, I'm, I'm going to bet you're going to win most of the games that you play if you remember the right moves. If you remember the right moves. If you forget, it's probably not going to end well. So just remember the mousetraps. All right, so let's go back, and 
let's see a slightly more common than a3 is the move castles okay and levy at gotham chess he did a video on how to play this as white this is the move he recommends okay and then after c6 so we have to play c6 to add some a defender he recommends the move d4 and this is the most common move that's played d4 and he says that that white will win 90 percent of the games and for most people who are playing black who don't know what to do i think he's right i think he's right this is a very hard position to play as black if you don't if you're not prepared but that's why you're watching this video and that's what i'm gonna tell you what to do right now so now first of all you cannot capture the pawn uh i think that would be obvious but opening up the king to to a rook terrible idea do not do that that's losing on the spot so the move you need to play is queen to f6 and the idea for one is if you can trade off the queens you're gonna be good right white's not gonna have anywhere near of as strong of an attack without its queen so when you play queen to f6 white has to deal with this he can't just let you trade the queens now if he goes for a move like queen g4 putting you in check which is a kind of a natural looking move you're going to play king to f7 and now you've got an attack on his queen with your bishop and it's it's not good for white uh, he has to go back somewhere and you kind of just gain the tempo by doing that and now you can play queen to g6 and you're you're setting up some threats here and you're setting up some threats here okay so that's not a good move for white the best move i um, going back to this position the best move for white is to play queen e2 immediately. So he goes back here and he's lining up on your king, pinning this pawn and, and keeping the pressure on the e-file. And now what you need to do is just bring your king back. Okay, and the point is you want to get out of the pin. You want to open up this bishop and get your king safer, right? Further away from the center. So we just slide our king back. Now at this point in the database, there's only two moves that have really been played frequently. A3 and d takes e5. So let's look at d takes e5 first. It looks like a natural move, capturing the pawn. It's actually pretty good for you as black because now this pawn blocks the e-file for you, right? White's pieces cannot go through the pawn, so how are they gonna get to your king, right? So that's actually, uh, that's actually a good thing for you. And then you can play queen to g6, and you're doing a good job of defending, and it gets very hard for white to break through. So knight to e4 is something they can try. Then you can play bishop to f5, so you're lining up here, and f3 is white's best move to defend it. And now you can play king to e8, just bringing your king back. And now let's look at a couple of moves that white might try. Maybe one would be knight to d6, trying to put you in check and, and open up the queen if you capture, but actually after you capture and they take, all you have to do is play king to d7 because your knight is controlling the square and white really doesn't have anything. You've got everything defended. If he takes this, you recapture with the knight, keeping it defended. And next move, you're probably going to bring this rook over, and you're just winning. Um, so that doesn't work for white. If they try to just develop their bishop, like maybe bishop d2, well, you've got this. You can capture that. And then if they bring, let's say, a rook over here, you can hop your knight back to d4. And this is a great position for black. Black is doing very well here. So the only thing that they can try is a3 to chase your knight away. And then you have to drop back, then they can capture here, and when you recapture, they've got this knight to d6 check move again. But now you can set this little trap, which I say trap, but I mean it's really hard to see unless you're playing against a computer. You move your king to d8, and it looks like you're giving away this pawn for free, but if they take it, that's good for you. So they take it, you play king to c7, and you're, you're basically trapping this knight. There's nowhere for this knight to go. If it tries to go here, you've got this little fork and you pick up the knight. So it can't go there. It can't go here, it's, it's covered. Only thing it can do is go back to d6 and then you just takes, takes, queen takes, and you're doing fine. Okay, you're up a piece and now your king is, is relatively safe. You've got the queen defending it. I say relatively safe, you gotta be careful. You still have to be careful. It's the same game plan as when you started don't get checkmated and enjoy the fact that you're up a piece, right? Um, but this is very good for, for black. After something like bishop e3, you can bring, uh, let's see, rook h to e8, bring this rook over, and now you're just playing a normal chess game where black's ahead, okay? Black has an advantage here. All right, so I've jumped back to when we played our queen out, offering the queen trade, and remember I said the best move for white was to go to e2. We slide our king back, 
And that was when there was A3 and there was D takes E5. Remember, we just looked at D takes E5 and, and what we do in that scenario. Now I'm gonna look at A3. So A3 is hitting in the knight. And if we just move the knight, like let's say we just go back here, we're in big trouble because now white's gonna capture here and if we recapture, the knight comes in and boom, we're done for, game over. So we can't do that. So this is a little bit of a more of a complicated move, but what we have to do is capture on c3 with our knight. And the idea is we're hitting the queen, so he can't just take our knight or we'll take his queen. So we have to recapture this way. And then we can bring the knight back to d5. Basically keeping a knight at, at, on d5, we've just traded off his knight on c3, right? And so that's what you have to remember on, on a3. You have to capture on c3 first and then hop your knight back. And now there's two moves again that have been tried, rook e1 and pawn takes. So on pawn takes, now we have to move our queen and really queen g6, queen f5, queen f7, any of those squares are good for the queen. I like queen g6 personally because we're, we're setting up some tricks here. Um, so we'll go with queen g6 and after something like f4, if white tries to keep the pressure up, we can just play like bishop f5 to blockade, you know, this pawn so it can't come forward and then let's see white's best move um maybe bishop d2 and then we can bring our king back to let this bishop out and we've survived okay we're not getting checkmated right now we're going to develop this bishop we can probably bring our rooks over and we're just playing chess this is better for black okay black has the advantage we we have survived the fried liver we didn't get checkmated and black has the advantage all right, now I want to go back to the starting position of the fried liver attack. Now, if you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed by all the lines that we just looked at, uh, first of all, that's okay because I feel I felt that way too when I was preparing for this video. There's a lot of lines, a lot of different variations, and it's very, very tricky. Remember, we're walking through a minefield here, right? That's what playing the fried liver as black is like. You're walking through a minefield, and if you step on one, it's over. That being said... I still like it, and I'm gonna actually start playing this myself in a couple games and see how it goes. My recommendation for uh, for playing this would be spend some time and memorize a few of the most common lines, and then try to just understand the ideas behind some of the other the other moves. So, you know, at the beginning here, I think it's pretty straightforward, right? Like white attacks your knight, you got to defend it. The only piece that's really able to do that is this knight. And retreating, we talked about it's bad, so you got to go forward to defend, right? And then if they chase you away, well, pretty logical move, you're going to go for the fork, right? And again, you're going to take the rook. So all those moves, I think, make a lot of sense. Now, when they capture here, I would go back and review those lines. That's something you want to remember. So when they take with the bishop, where does your king need to go? D7, right? King to D7. And if they play, uh, you know, queen f7 check right away, well, you can block with the queen. If they play queen f5 first, you have to move your king up. And if they come to f7, you have to be careful. Watch out for the checkmate. So you have to make a space for your king to run to, so you play queen e7, right? So this queen e7 idea is coming up. And then if they check, you can block, and you're fine. Going back, if they take with the knight, you've got the discovered check to watch out for. The one move, and this is one I would I would probably recommend memorizing, queen to h4, right? On the knight captured, you play queen to h4 because it hits the bishop. And the idea is that if they do something like this, you move, and if they take your rook, boom, you take their bishop. And then you've got, you know, threats of your own. Uh, and in some lines, if we go back, if they go to b6 and you go to e7, you've got bishop g4 threats where you pin their queen. Things to remember, okay? So... But I would say do, do a mixture of memorize a couple moves like that queen h4 one is important and then try to understand some of these ideas, right? And remember, the goal is try to survive. Don't get checkmated. And then if we go back to this position right here, so after night b4, they don't have to play a3. The other main option is that they castle. And after you play c6, remember just adding an extra defender, they're going to play d4. And you need to bring the queen to offer the queen trade. If you can get them to trade queens, it's good for you. They'll have to go back to e2. And then we can follow through moving our king backwards. 
uh, and it, it does get tricky depending on what, what lines they play, if they capture or if they play A3. But uh, the point from this video, okay, and the takeaway is that this is very much playable for black. Like it's not an automatic loss, like a lot of people think. But if you're gonna play it, watch this video a couple times, you know, pull up an engine. If you know how to do that, I've, I've talked about that in another video. Um, use an engine to kind of help you prepare and you're gonna be in a much better place than if you just go into it kind of like, hey, let's just see what happens, right? Well, I hope this video helped you. Um, if you play this and have some success, let me know in the comments. I'm interested to hear that. Shout out to Infinite Quest 86. He actually recommended, uh, you know, doing a video from Black's perspective on the fried liver attack. So appreciate that. Um, I think it was a really good idea. And obviously I made this video. So yeah, um, I'm actually gonna try to play this in some of my games. I may do a follow up video where I kind of compile some games. If I get enough people that play this as white, I'll play it as black and just kind of see how they go in some of my games. Um, so be on the lookout for that. But um, yeah, as always, thanks for watching. Stay sharp, play smart and take care.